Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop today. It's September 1st and this is my weekly shop update. So I have a bunch of things to share with you this week. And first, let's take a look at the new look of the sawmill. So I'll let that soak in for a bit. <laughs> this is very different. <laughs> but I, uh, I kind of like it. I think it's got a really, really nice look. And uh, I guess I could stop hearing about how it's not painted anymore. Well, at least for now. <laughs> so I kind of had to kind of cap this off and move on to other things. So I didn't get as far as I had hoped I would. I still have a lot of little things to do that I was planning to do, but I got to get back to doing some other stuff. This took me like uh, almost an entire week to get through all of this. So I got other things I got to work on. And I'm heading to England next week, so not a whole lot of time to be messing around with this. So I'm going to leave it like this, and then I'll get back to it uh, probably later in the month. Um, yeah, I think so. But I have a few things I thought I'd point out of things that aren't done yet and a few little minor things that I did that should make some people happy. So first off, one of the biggest things that's still missing that to put on is the lift. I still have to do the chain routing at the very top there to get the linking chains routing around where the motor is going to go. So when the whole head goes up, the motor sits between the linkage chains. Uh, so I have to do that still. And I do have a few things to add at the bottom where the, uh, the posts meet those little support frames there. So I just left it off for now and I'll just do it all later when I get back to the project. I still have to reattach to the support for adjusting the guides in and out. I took this off to make it more easy to have this whole thing disassembled and just bolting things on just makes it, things a lot more convenient. I totally forgot to paint this, so uh, I'll have to paint this in the future and then I can bolt it back on when it's painted. So one of the other things I was hoping to get done was the belt guard. I didn't have enough time to fabricate that, so I'll have to do that in the future. So I left the belts off for now and the motor is just kind of sitting here for now until I get that done. Now, one thing I did fix that should make people pretty happy was I fixed the fan on the motor. So the fan was kind of bent and warped before. So when the motor was spinning, the fan was rubbing, making some really annoying sounds that some people didn't like. That's been fixed. So yeah, overall, totally different look, but I am really liking it. It is kind of a sexy look. <laughs> so of course, I still have some other minor things to do. I want to get the mount for the electrical box down and get that painted. I kind of want to paint that electrical box as well. So there's some more paint stuff that's to happen over there. But things are kind of moving along and I'm pretty happy with the progress at this point. So let's head back into the shop and take a look at some viewer projects. First is the bedside chest by Matt. The carcass and drawer fronts of the chest are made from walnut and the drawers themselves are pine. The top is very figured olive wood with ebony bow ties for stabilization. This was Matt's first large furniture build, and he also shared with me a kitchen sink that he made, which I thought was really cool. Next is a throne by John. He made it from an oak tree that came down that he managed to have milled. He carved some fairies on the back and some oak leaves and acorns on the legs. Next is a live edge bench by Paul. Paul is 15 years old and the bench top is made from oak and the legs are made from ash. The oak that Paul used for the top was from a tree cut down and milled by his grandfather, who sadly passed away last year. And you can find more of Paul's work over on his Instagram. Last of this week is a clock by Bob. The clock was made from an urban tree that was blown over during Hurricane Matthew in North Carolina. He got a few pieces of the tree, including a 31-inch diameter burl. He was also able to save a few small sections, and those were milled for the base for the clock. So progress on the high boy this week. I finished up the scroll work on the lower case, so I added this cutout here on the lower apron. I also added a similar cutout on the side panels, so I think that's going to tie in nicely to the rest of the curvature in the piece, make this thing feel a little less boxy, and just kind of, I don't know, lighten the look a little bit. And this design also gives me some space here for some drop finials, which should add some more visual interest to this very visually interesting piece. <laughs> so at this point, the high boy lower case is pretty much all constructed. The only thing I'm working on right now is doing some last kind of final detail work to make sure this thing is totally ready for glue up, which is gonna be kind of scary because I have a lot of work invested at this point and I don't really wanna screw that up. <laughs> so I'm taking a little time to making sure everything is perfect and exactly as it needs to before I start slapping some glue on that thing, which will be happening quite shortly. And a big announcement this week is that Lincoln Electric has come on as a sponsor. I knew a few people pointed out the new welder in the video last week. This is their Power MIG 210MP, which is a multi-process welder. It does MIG 
TIG and stick. And I was using this thing as a stick machine that's all I've used it for so far, and it's a very nice stick machine. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying MIG because that's going to be a little bit of a different experience that I'm used to, just using stick all the time. But I have this wall there as well as a dedicated TIG machine and a plasma cutter as well. So you'll be seeing some Lincoln products integrated into some future videos. Looking forward to try and take especially because at least from what I've seen as someone who has never done it and has very little welding experience, uh, TIG welding is like the hand cut dovetail equivalent in welding, I think, at least in my mind. <laughs> so a couple of reminders, tomorrow, Saturday the 2nd, I'll be at the Minnetonka Rocker Store from 9 to 11 hanging out. It was pretty cool. I was in the little circular this week, so if you're in the Twin Cities area, you might have got one of these little circulars. That's, uh, that's me right there. And then next Friday and Saturday, I'll be over at Yandel's as part of my trip to England that Triton sent me on. And um, while I'm over there, after I do the, the thing at Yandel's, I'll be doing a green chair making class. So I'm really looking forward to that. You're taking some wood and right from the tree and you're cutting it up, making spindles out of it all by hand. So it's gonna be all hand tool stuff. So I'll be using a pole lathe. I get to use a draw knife a lot more and spoke shades and things like that. Um, carving a seat by hand, which is kind of cool because a couple weeks ago I did it by power. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. I already know that. <laughs> so uh, Triton's going to be doing some videos of my trip over there and they'll, those will be over on their YouTube channel. So I'll leave a link to their channel, you know, in those places up in the cards and description and all that good stuff. And then lastly, I do have these shirts back in stock. I know some people are looking for sizes that were out of stock. I got every size back in stock in that shirt. So if you're looking for those, those are over on my website. And I think that's about it. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment as always I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.